it's day 19. Um, I'm out on the search for ptarmigan poop. With the Arctic Circle under our belt and the solstice behind us, it was time to keep heading north. The next landmark was the boundary between the Yukon Territory and Northwest Territories, which are marked by a sign, but also by this mountain pass called Wright's Pass. There were two ferry crossings between the Arctic Circle and the town of Inuvik. The first of which was the Peel River. And he says, come on. Thank you. The second ferry crossing was the Mackenzie River. The mighty Mackenzie. Rather than go straight across the river and fight the current, they would just gun it upstream and then about halfway across just turn off the engine and the momentum would carry us across as the current brought us to the destination. That way they would save fuel. Interesting. We're crossing the Mackenzie River now. This is what it looks like. We took a little side road through a town that was on the map just to check it out, and it was fairly well deserted. Yeah, it looked to me like a ghost town. We saw maybe two or three humans. A lot of the buildings that are permanent look more or less temporary up here. Everything's off the ground, presumably because of the permafrost. Well, we finally made it to Inuvik and camped there for one night. And got a pretty horrible meal. <laughs> I guess it was edible. <laughs> All the vegetables look to have come out of cans. Yeah, I don't know how folks handle living up here without fresh food. <laughs> oh, it's called fresh caribou meat. Ah, uh, yeah. Not my game. Ah, uh, get it? Game. <laughs> the next morning, we hit the road to make our day trip to Tuktoyaktuk. The road from Inuvik to Tuktoyaktuk is really new. In fact, this road that hadn't been in existence until November of 2017 was still a work in progress. We saw a lot of road construction along the way. We picked a really nice day to go up there. We heard stories several days after uh, motorcycles going down and people slipping off the road in the mud the day after we were there because the rains came and the road was nasty. Lots of good bird sightings at the dump, though. More You're into ravens. Yeah, huge ravens and, and uh, lots of mugles. We were really just blown away at the scenery as we approached town. The colors, you know, the way that the painted buildings contrasted with the more neutral and stark landscape, but then the beautiful blue sky and the white ice and snow that was on the water. It's just such a beautiful sight. Once we made it to the very end of the road, we saw Tom and Colleen. <laughs> Our new best friends, they volunteered to help document the Arctic Plunge. It's good to see them. It's good to see Ubi again uh, up at Tuktoyaktuk. We're here. We made it. We made it. I've never witnessed a polar bear so 
drink before. Well, this could be so it. this is going to be as close as it gets, I think. Yeah, yeah you betcha. <laughs> the arctic plunge we needed to warm up we got in the truck we turned on the engine and we ran the heater full blast as we clothed ourselves in dry clothing and then we beelined it for the only place we could find that actually had hot coffee we had a picnic a view of the pingos pingos are a really interesting land formation caused by ice Kind of like kind of arctic, like arctic acne. acne. Yeah, the water goes deeper than usual in some spots, and then that water expands. And apparently it's self-perpetuating, so once one begins, it grows each year. And they're growing or, or shrinking. Each one won't be the same size the next year. And when they go extinct, they become like a perfectly round little lake. And if you look on Google Maps satellite, that's what you see all over this landscape. It was very cold up there. Cold. It was that icy wind that kind of just chills your core. Um, I think our cores were chilled by jumping in the water. Well, yeah, there was that too. <laughs> we ran into a couple of travelers. They were from New Zealand and Australia. They had also been frolicking about jumping in the water. We found out that they, as well as Scott, were going to be running the Midnight Sun Fun Run in Inuvik the next day. For all people that are joking about the bears, um, that is a concern. Wildlife is a concern as we live in the Arctic. So um, please be aware of the wildlife. Um, run really fast. They have it all timed out so that the racers finish at midnight. There's no questions. Everybody's ready to go. Once my horn goes in the truck. Three, two, one. Accomplished. Yeah, we overran the turnaround point by three miles. I say, excuse me, we called this a half marathon. I think it was the second half of it. Yeah, that's what it felt like. We didn't see one beer? No, there was no beer at the aid station. I would have brought my own if I knew that. Oh, I thought you said bear. No, no, bear. No, bear. No, good. Excellent. Yeah, we did. I think I came in second. Second to last. I'll take it. Got a free shirt out of the deal. The long trip back to Tombstone was really beautiful. I saw some more wildlife. We stopped at this gravel quarry and camped for a night, and at Eagle Plains was this pretty big lodge. The restaurant was no longer serving, so we had a beer for dinner and played their giant cribbage board, which actually had pegs made of painted bear claws, 
And finally, we were back at Tombstone Park. This time, we decided to explore further. We'd been looking forward to getting back to Tombstone since we passed through the first time, and it was really exciting to take as much time as we needed. We're here in Tombstone. Last time we were here, I found this really crazy pile of something, and then I found out it was ptarmigan poop. And I'm hoping the pile is still there because I want to take a picture of it. We are now resigned to instant coffee. So now I have fake coffee to go with my fake sugar. But let me tell you, the cinnamon is high quality. Today we're going to go on a hike, and then I think we're going to roll into Dawson City and find some free camping in a car wash, maybe spend a day trolling around there. So by the time I had started recording, I had already passed my pile, but I found it. Here it is. That is ptarmigan poop. From what I understand, in Greenland, they eat it. I'm not going to collect this and eat it. I'm just going to take this picture. And especially because I don't have the requisite rancid seal fat to mix it with to make it extra delicious. Apparently the ptarmigans just eat spruce tips and they're lovely. It's just really processed spruce and then they just sit in one place for a really long time and just hang out and poop. It's really easy to gather the ptarmigan poop because you don't have to be looking all over the place. It's like, oh look, here's a giant pile and you put it in your bag and take it home. And surprise the wife with some delicacy. Anyhow. Uh. Here we are at the Grizzly Lake Trailhead. Uh, it's supposed to be a beautiful hike in Tombstone Territorial Park. Well, here's Grizzly Lake, but apparently it's snowed in, so we probably can't get there. But we can get two kilometers six, which is like, yeah. we'll just go till we can't anymore and turn around and come back. As you can see, we're gonna be going uphill. Most of the way. Let's do it. All right. Well, this is what the beginning of the trail looks like. We'll keep you posted. So here we have what I can only assume is Grizzly Creek. Word on the street is we need to make more noise around creeks. Yes, lots of noise and be ready. Cool. He's got that on a quick draw holster. Rachel's taking pictures of some lichens or moss. What do you think so far? I think it's beautiful. Come on, lead dog. Let's do this. Woof, woof. <laughs> <laughs> Highlights of next episode include, but are not limited to, a visit to Dawson City. We make some electrical upgrades to the truck. We drive the top of the world highway into Alaska and a visit to a town called Chicken. You're not going to want to miss it. it. Tuck, tuck, bow buck, banana fan of boat.